FDI community from our studio to yours. Welcome to the season finale of the In Your Studio podcast. And joining me for the season finale is my wonderful co-host, Will. How are you doing tonight? I am doing fantastic, Matt. I am so excited. We finally made it here. It's been uh, been a lot faster than I expected to get here. Like it just kind of like went by. I totally agree with that. I am so glad that using AI, we were able to convince the FTI community we had on 10, but now 11 guests on this podcast. So we've tricked y'all. Yeah, like it makes it so much easier. There was not <laughs> one human guest on this podcast. It was all AI. You have been fooled. That's why we have to end the season because our AI subscription ran out. We're not renewing it this summer. So we'll see what we have to do for season two. <laughs> Maybe we'll actually have to record real people. Ah, That's highly ambitious. That's an ambitious thought. We'll take the summer to think about it. But for real, it, as Will mentioned, it is crazy how fast we got to this point. I want to say we only took two weeks off entirely from the beginning of the podcast in March all the way to the middle of June right now. And realistically, I don't know what the future holds for the podcast in terms of guests. But I would say season one had an amazing lineup of guests from different pockets of the world, from all kinds of crazy cool art. We had Wednesday, we had Nintendo Cisco, we had Bryceus, Mega Matt, Joe Ash, Entity, Artie and Grayson, Mindy, Emerson Corleone, the Nathan 709. And now on the season finale, we have the man who honestly made the podcast possible with the art that he created for us. Mr. Timmy Toucan, all the way from Germany. But before we get there, I'm going to do a little pop quiz with Will quickly. What have been some of your favorite moments of season one, my friend? Honestly, the first episode was fantastic. Like, just fantastic experience. Kind of like the kickoff episode. It's crazy to see how far we've come from the first episode. Um, I feel like I feel like it was a, such a banger to kind of start the session on. Just like that initial like pilot. But a few few moments kind of throughout the podcast that are memorable. Um, everyone, people who've kind of listened to the full show will remember a few things like the uh, like Garfield himself. The Gar- <laughs> I hate Mondays, man. <laughs> he hates Mondays. Um, and like, uh, I I know it's really recent, but uh, talking can you talk about Skylanders on the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing I ever thought would be able to come. That was pretty fun too for me. A very <laughs> very good time. <laughs> <laughs> what's actually so great about that was we're recording this cold open on june 14th but earlier today i hopped into jay matthew's live stream while he was co-streaming with the nathan 709 and jay matthew actually said his tiktok followers right now have been coming from the skylanders community <laughs> and i was i started to laugh because i was like there's no way and then i guess jay matthew said to them like oh my god this reminds me of my childhood and everybody responded with, what do you mean your childhood? This is relevant right now. And I was like, what do you mean? Wait, There's what? an actual base for this? Like, well, what good do for you them. mean? Good for them. Oh, it oh, is man. all love, of course. Uh, before I break down some of my favorite moments and not hold on to the community for too long for this cold open, because I know everybody's here for the conversation with Timmy. Earlier this week, we have done it as a community we have reached the 1,000 community member milestone on our Instagram hub. And let me tell you, I've been trying to compose words for this. I I don't think it's kicked in yet because I honestly was editing the newsletter while it happened. Uh, there's a great community member by the name of Brandon Boucher, and he sent, uh, he sent FTI to all of his film friends because he's studying film in Toronto right now. And he's like, yo, you did it. You guys did it. You guys did it. And I looked at it. And I just like had like this half smile, but like it progressively grew bigger. And I was like, oh my God, we legitimately did it. So in my notepad right now, I'm composing like a big like thank you message that, but I want to make sure I cover absolutely everything because Mm -hmm. I would have never thought on April 2020 when I purchased this PC that we're recording on that we would have over 160 newsletters. So many music albums. I guess we have two music albums. Good Morning. We have the podcast. We have cooking shows. We have music discussion series. We have Wednesday and Mindy collaborations. Like what we've been able to do as a community in the first three years 
is absolutely insane. So when I'm able to kind of get my clear thoughts into words about how I feel about this, I will be definitely sharing it on Twitter. Uh, not holding on to you guys for too much longer. I kind of want to let you guys know what is going down in the season finale. As I mentioned, we do have on Timmy Toucan. He is the mastermind who captured the first three years of FTI, threw it on an emblem, and he gave us the three-year anniversary logo that will never be topped in terms of how special it feels to see everybody's names on there. Uh, and then he also created the In Your Studio podcast art. Oh, and yeah. in the conversation, we break down his art, how he was able to begin at such a young age, the kind of, what would you say, like the kind of uh, build your own path as an artist instead mm-hmm, of like mm-hmm. following one set path. Um, and how how traveling actually got him inspired to create hand poke tattooing, uh, the thought process when he uh, starts a new project, and so much more. My face is so red from talking. I don't know what else to say other than thank you, everybody, for tuning in to every session of the podcast, for checking out not only every session, but the creators we've interviewed. Before we send it to Timmy's podcast, is there anything you would like to add on, Will? No, I'm just really happy to be here. Thank you, everyone, for actually tuning in and like uh, all the feedback and all the support. It's been fantastic. And with that, I guess we would he- now we can head into the studio of Timmy Toucan. FTI community, we have chosen the guest to end this season with none other than the creative artist for the In Your Studio podcast art, for the FTI three-year emblem art, and overall just one fantastic multi-avenue visual artist. As I mentioned, he is the mastermind behind so many FTI projects. He's actually created the concept for the next FDI project, but more on that later. When you view his portfolio, it will leave you scrolling for hours. FDI community, all the way from Germany, where it is currently 1 a.m., please help us in welcoming Timmy Toucan to the In Your Studio podcast. How are you doing tonight? Hi, man. Thanks. Yeah, I'm doing fine. How about you? I am doing fantastic. Will, how are we doing today? I am doing great. I am yawning way too much for it not being when I am here, um, but I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> this is such a long time coming, as we were just talking about in the cold open that was not recorded. Uh, Timmy is joining us at 1 a.m., and it is crazy because we've known each other for just a bit over a year, and this is the first time any of us have been in a call talking, and we're in for one hell of a season finale. But Let's get right into Timmy and his career. Being our friendly neighborhood hand poke tattoo artist and creator, you and your art have traveled into so many, and I mean so many neighborhoods worldwide, from personal pieces to collaborations to even putting your art on skin. It is incredible that all of the places that your art has traveled to, uh, but for those unfamiliar with Timmy Toucan, why don't you go ahead and paint us a picture of who you are? Yeah, well, I'm, as you already mentioned, uh, I'm doing hand poke tattoos for several years now. And besides that, I really like to draw a lot. And uh, sometimes I also like to experiment with 3D animation. And yeah, I really like to explore new arts all the way along. So whatever comes to my mind, I just give it a try, give it a shot. And this brought me all the way here to you guys. <laughs> And what a journey it has been from honestly early 2022 or mid 2022 rather to everything we have done. Um, You mentioned there the 3D animation, which I kind of want to mention quickly before we break it down later. Your Who Is video, when you 3D animated that entire thing, essentially, like incredible. Well, thank you, man. Thank you. I just I just remember very, very, very vividly. Uh, sitting there and being one of the first, it was one of the first things you showed me from FTI, and it was actually <laughs> Timmy's video. Um, I remember you like you showing me. I'm just like, whoa, this is crazy. This is like actually <laughs> really cool. Like it was, it was. I just remember it very vividly. It's all I wanted to say. Like it was like, wow. Ever since then, I was like, geez, man, that's crazy. It was, uh, it was my uh, slow but very precise sales pitch to get will to join the (laughs) fti community i was like well we have artists like timmy who creates fantastic art 
you should come check us out. You should come <laughs> check us out. At that point, Will's already part of the community. But to me, I'm just like, Will, look what Timmy's posting. Look what Wednesday just released. So, uh, yeah, that, I remember that day perfectly. Um, a word that we use on the podcast and take a shot every time I have said it over the last 11 <laughs> sessions is versatile. But it is true. <laughs> All of the creators that we have talked about are versatile, and you are certainly no different. Being able to transition from traditional art to 3D animation, as we were just talking about, to hand poke tattoos in the snap of a finger is absolutely incredible. Not to mention, and this stays true to how what you do with FTI, your willingness to take on everyone's idea from the Shit Squad podcast to the In Your Studio art and turn it into something greater than life is so beautiful. Talk to us about the art that you got started with and kind of like the origin story behind it. Beginnings of my art career had go way back when I was in uh, school. I already experimented with 3D animations a bit, but that was way back then, many, many and a year ago. And I was very limited, so I didn't pursue it any longer, but I always liked to draw when I was a little kid. I always drew and scribbled around and... Yeah, well, later on, I kind of let go and didn't pursue drawing or doing art anymore for a while and came to it way back later, some years ago, about six years or so. I started having fun again and drawing and picked up again. And later on, I decided I want to have more tattoos. And then I thought I can <laughs> teach it myself. And I was very carefully, I informed myself very well before I started. And it kind of worked very well from the beginning. And I just kept going and going. When you first began your art career, uh, was it like kind of your end goal to like adapt to other styles? Or was it something that like happened along the way as like your curiosity grew and your imagination grew fonder? Uh, I definitely uh, developed along the way. I didn't have any clue where I want to go, and I kind of don't really have a clue where I want to go now. I just enjoy creating and doing nice stuff. Kind of um, wanting to kind of move into a bit of you and yourself, kind of moving away from like the art itself and more into kind of what brought you to where you are today. Um, I kind of want to go look back into a bit more of you and um, kind of I know you're obviously hailing from Germany there. Um, we obviously have a very different view of kind of how, how our day to day goes. Is there some things that um, going back to like your early days that kind of things that happened that you kind of look back on fondly that helped you get to where you are currently? Um, or is it kind of the opposite? Ooh, I don't really know. There have been a lot of occasions that have been very uplifting for me, in, especially in my arts and uh, my self-esteem towards being something like an artist. Um, mm. I've had the luck that I uh, grew up in a very uh, happy uh, environment. So there were lots of people like my parents and friends who were encouraging me, but well, there, of course, have always been times where I didn't really believe in pursuing art would be a good thing to do. And that may be the reason why I let it, uh, let it go for so many years and stopped doing art entirely. So, like, kind of built off, like, um, figuring out, like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, of course, like, kind of, like, figuring out, like, what your, like, career trajectory should be rather than what you kind of want to do uh it depends i think because i don't really have a plan where i want to go so i don't know i really don't know i uh what i really enjoy and something you've kind of like uh helped me figure out with my life and like my endeavors is kind of like having fun with it um because uh, like a lot of the days and will can attest to this like i'm always trying to figure out what i'm doing tomorrow instead of like <laughs> living in the present but when you and i have a conversation especially like our very first uh, batch of conversations you're always so sure to like not only hype up me but like hype up like already and grace and an <laughs> entity and flick so like everybody that like you were like introduced to off the get-go from the community 
Um, and I want to tell you right now, if someone were to grab my phone, read the messages <laughs> you and I have, whether it's the FTI DMs or whether it is the DMs between you and I, I think we send more hearts to each other and more smiley faces in one conversation than I've said to so many people in one year, man. Like, you're so positive, you're so uplifting, and with you mentioning kind of like you grew up in like a very like happy environment and everything was like very like positive and such, uh, we discovered that your brother Felix is also an artist who grew up in the same environment as well. Uh, he creates music in collaboration with, and correct me if I'm saying the name wrong, Tanya Soul under the name Banger Lore. I don't know if there's any like uh, way of certainly pronouncing that, so I apologize if there is. Um, with the duo creating like upbeat, adrenaline-inducing music, perfectly fit for clubbing, I may add. Uh, the name suits the music, especially uh, the links I've been getting sent recently and their release on spotify that like i'm in their discography now it's in the fti mix on spotify <laughs> uh tell us about your brother like more specifically the relationship you guys have oh well that's so nice that's so nice to hear that they finally managed to contact you um yeah my brother we we grew up together and yeah when we were younger we didn't like each other at all that just came later when we were going to parties and uh having the same interests and uh, a few years ago, he moved to Spain, to Canary Islands, and oh, started making yeah. music some years ago. And is now, yeah, he knows a DJ and making bangers from paradise. I only can recommend to go out to SoundCloud and check out Banger Lore. And to be honest, I absolutely have no idea how to pronounce it. Fair enough. <laughs> absolutely don't have any fucking idea. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but i really enjoy the music it's so uplifting and fun yeah it uh for like for like the edm and kind of like a uh, dubstep music that like i do consume it's not frequently like i would definitely like have like my genre as i stick to the most whether it be like folk rock or whether it be like pop and now recently bedroom pop because of anxiety weekend uh when you introduced me to uh your you your oh my god banger lord's discography i was kind of just like Oh, like it's almost June here in Canada. I can see like the windows down. I could see it like crank to like maximum volume. And then like I'm listening, you know, like I'm sending it to my friends. I was just like, this is this is a tune. Like my head's moving just talking to you about this. So you can only imagine oh. what it's like when the music's actually on. Um, with you and your brother both being artists in two separate realms, do you guys kind of like push one another to continue creating? Or is it like two separate entire like um worlds you guys live in? Oh, I think it's two different kinds of worlds because uh, he doesn't have so much clue of uh, graphic design and stuff, mm. and I absolutely have no fucking clue about producing music, so that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, sometimes we really do push each other and uh, have ideas for each other and talk about the stuff. So it's kind of separate ways, but we do try to encourage each other. Would uh would you kind of like ever be interested to like kind of get like the essentials or like learn the basics of music producing or are you just gonna like leave that to your brother to like stay in that lane and like you kind of like stay in the art lane? Oh, I absolutely would fucking love to do music some days, uh, especially since my wife is actually a pretty good singer, so I'm the only one in my environment who is absolutely fucking untalented in musical stuff. <laughs> But yeah, well, who knows? Who knows? Maybe one day. Well, I am just saying that if Timmy were to ever take on creating music, <laughs> he would be a master in every single art, <laughs> like ever. He would pretty much go be in every yeah. art field, like off the get go. Immediately. Just pick everything to work towards. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> And um, kind of want to move in. I know you've talked, uh, actually you opened up quite a bit about like your personal life already. When it comes to kind of like separating the two, like your personal life and your online persona, I know a few, ses a few sessions back, I think it was like actually the one of the first sessions, if not the second, if I'm correct, I might be missing it. Uh, we talked to Bryceus and we kind of talked about the same thing. Uh, we talked about how we had to, how separating your persona from basically your online versus the actual person you are yourself. Yeah. Um, kind of matters to some people 
um, you yourself, would you say that your offline per person is um, like a toned down version of how you present yourself online? Or is it kind of just the same person that we're kind of seeing when you present yourself? Well, um, actually, actually, I'm not really presenting myself online so much. This is only one video and that True. took me ages to produce. So no, I think you don't really see <laughs> no. the real me online. You get a glimpse of what I really am, but it's not actual me. I, I only have about, I think, three photos of myself and this one video. And from time to time, you can see my face and my stories, but that's all. And I don't really talk about my personal life online so much. Don't know why. It's just, I just want to focus on the art more, I guess. Yeah, that's fair enough. Is there is that just kind of the main reason you just want to focus on the art? Or is it kind of like wanting to more keep it a bit off? Uh, both, I think. Both. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree with that. Honestly, if you want to make it about your work, make it about your work. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. sure. I really respect that. And creating art, like um, as an artist, like the like the canvases that you create and like the art you share. And this necessarily goes for like every artist to a degree. Like you can kind of learn a lot about the person based off like the art that they create and the messages that like they send through their art. Like um, you create such phenomenal pieces of animals, of people. You take like two worlds and you collaborate them together, but they're always like either so joyful or they like spark a conversation because of the emotions that you're portraying through the canvas. So I feel like if there's people to this day that necessarily don't know the face to the voice or like the face to the art, it's very easy to kind of like read what kind of person you are as a very like cheerful and upbeat person because of what you create. Um, I would say when you and I first started talking, and I know I've like mentioned this a million times, we only talked through like the FTI page and then we talked about briefly through like our own personal conversations. And even before I knew what you look like, like I could tell off the bat, you were like, so like for the people, you wanted to see everybody succeed. You wanted to make sure everybody had a smile on their face. Um, the three year anniversary logo I'm wearing right now, uh, you brought smiles to everybody's face that is on this emblem and including the people that saw the emblem when we announced it, because you're all about bringing smiles to people's faces. Um, and I just want to thank you once again for everything you've not only done for FTI, but for myself and everybody you've ever kind of uh, crossed paths with. Oh, thank you so much. It's been such a joy for me because that's exactly the reason why I put so much time and effort in the FTI community, because you always get back what you put into, you know? It's like nothing but love with you guys. Nothing but love. Nothing but love. I, I, can't, I can't really <laughs> add anything to that. That's the reason why I'm doing this all with you together. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens every single episode. I mean, from the very beginning, it's like, wow, everyone really cares for each other. That's kind of what I saw at the beginning when Matt showed, like I was saying with Matt showing me the community. Everyone's just super yeah, happy, totally, super happy, totally. super happy to work together, you know? Um, I remember back then when I he first showed me kind of like your work, I remember going in and then seeing hand poke tattooing, which I I will admit, never knew it was a thing I, I i i've heard of it but i never like knew what it like was like which is really interesting um so i kind of want to get into that just a little bit and to start off kind of get into your art i i do have a friend who's currently learning how to tattoo but it's nothing nearly like hand poke tattooing and i kind of brought it up to her briefly i was like what, what do you think about hand poke and she was like oh no 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 never never so I kind of wanted to talk about like <laughs> the process behind hand poke tattooing and kind of gets a bit know it a bit better because I feel like there's a lot of people that are going to listen to this don't really know too much about it. I think it would be really interesting to kind of dig into it a bit. I would love to. Yeah. yeah. All right. So just like how did it kind of start? Maybe uh, you <laughs> basically you take a, a, if you if you if you break it down, you take a needle, you take some ink and you uh, you put the needle in the ink and then you put the ink uh, with the needle in <laughs> <Yep>. your skin. <laughs> Basically, that's it. Um, but of course, you should be very uh, cautious about your hygiene and all the other things mm -hmm. that goes with tattooing with a regular gun machine or cull machine as well. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. It's like uh, taking a pen and making dots on a piece of paper. Fair enough. But with a little kink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> makes sense and kind of where did it where did what kind of got you started into hand poke tattooing versus like just traditional tattooing um i was uh making 
a holiday in Thailand with my wife some years ago. And even before I got there, I heard about the traditional bamboo tattooing they do in Thailand. And I totally decided if I ever go to Thailand, I want a bamboo tattoo because it sounds so crazy. I really want to have that experience. And when we went there, I got my tattoo. And well, some years after that, uh, Bamboo tattoo, which was also is also a hand poking technique. Um, I decided if some people in Thailand to put it down can do tattoos by hand, uh, why shouldn't I be able to do this? And then I started to go into this rabbit hole of hand poking tattoo techniques because there are so many crazy hand poking or 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 traditional tattoo techniques in the world. It's so crazy and totally fascinated me, and I kept uh kept digging deeper and deeper until i decided it's time to start it on my own hmm, interesting and um is there anything like in prep that you have to do um or techniques that you have to learn that differ greatly from like traditional tattooing obviously it's by hand so it's probably a lot more you have to be a lot more cautious i'm assuming obviously surely as a tattoo artist you should always be as cautious as you can because it stays forever so but i know i totally know what you're uh hinting at um uh, well it's it's i i've 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 tattooed myself with a coil machine once it was uh, very stupid it was very late i was very drunk to be honest oh no not cool but uh, it was not a good experience probably because i wasn't prepared at all but we all have our little uh, mistakes from the past i guess uh well but that's why I can't really tell you what you have to be cautious about when using a traditional coil machine for tattooing. But uh, for poking by hand, you really just need to figure out how you make the ink stay under the skin when uh, pulling the needle out of it. It's it's hard to explain because uh, I'm don't have so much profound vocabulary that is tattoo related. Um, but yeah, with a machine, you of course have to always have the machine adjusted. And that was always a thing I didn't want to uh, waste my time or my energy on. For me, it's much easier. I just put, put the stencil on the skin and then I, after the skin is prepared, of course, and then I just take my needle, dip it in the ink, and I can go. I really enjoy it. Plus, it's not as loud as the regular coil tattoo machines. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> also, it may have the downside. Um, whenever you release the, the the needle out of the skin, it makes a little plopping sound, like oh. And no some idea. people, some people uh, find it pretty uh, disturbing or disgusting sound. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I really enjoy the sound because it uh, means I'm doing my job. Um, yeah, but well, the coil machine is making <laughs> all the time. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. Not quite better. So uh, yeah, that's actually, but uh, that's actually a really big part of why I didn't ever start tattooing with a machine. I don't wanna have the adjustments and i don't want to have the noise and uh, meanwhile i think there are tattoo machines that are really quiet and really easy to handle but they're also pretty damn expensive so why not see that how it is (laughs) building off of that um have you like got to be like the person who's given people like their first like hand poke tattoo or like even like an additional question to that kind of like someone who's used to like the more like traditional style have you kind of got someone to love hand poke tattooing if that makes sense like uh have you ever, i guess the word is like have you ever converted <laughs> anybody from like a traditional tattoo to like hand poking um there are a few people who say that uh, hand poke tattooing doesn't hurt so much but we all know that uh Pain tolerance is very uh, subjective from human to human, so I guess that's yes. not true for all. Some people say it even hurt more than the uh, machine tattoo, so 
Um, but yeah, I actually I've, I've practiced on myself, of course, and then I slowly started with uh, friends and family. So uh, many of them don't have much or any tattoo. So some of them got the first tattoo by me, and I think that's pretty neat. Oh, amazing! That's that actually cool. very neat. That's awesome. Um, there was actually funny like two weeks back because like uh, Will and uh, his wife have been kind of uh, showing my girlfriend and I uh, like these temporary tattoos that last like quite a while. Uh, so we started off on like level one. Uh, Danielle found a shop here in town that like gives you like templates that you can just buy. So what I did was I put an <laughs> elephant right above my shorts line and. At, at the time, I was like, wow, this really hurts, like, as a total joke. And uh, I, can, I can only imagine if I went from, like, water on a cloth to, like, dampen it on to, like, actually, like, poke in my skin over time or even, like, getting an actual tattoo. Mm -hmm. It's an experience. I'm like, oh, guys, I'm going to do that by the end of the year. Oh, guys, I'm going to do that by the end of next month. And I've never made the leap because I don't know necessarily what I want to, like, permanently put on my body. Uh, so, like... I'm I'm kind of fortunate yet lucky, I guess. I guess those are the same word to know there's websites such as the one Will uses that I can't think of right now where you can like upload a picture and it's like, hey, test that on your arm for two yeah. weeks to see if you get tired of it. Mm -hmm. And if you like it, go get it done. Yeah, it's ink box. It's actually super helpful for that. Kind I actually of thing. had of them. Yeah, I yeah. may uh, think that's pretty nice for people that uh, can't decide. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's Very pretty cool. neat. From kind of like drawing on the skin to illustrating on canvas, uh, your portfolio houses a lot of very detailed and very, very expressive art, as I mentioned previously, whether it's penguins in tubs, Pokemon and Care Bear crossovers, <laughs> and recently a lot of portrait art. There is endless amounts for of your art for people to indulge in. We're kind of curious to know, or very curious rather, what some of your favorite pieces are, and if there's kind of like any backstory to your favorite pieces. <sighs> my favorite pieces? Uh, my favorite piece <laughs> actually at the moment, I guess, uh, I, I have two favorite pieces at the moment. It's the one piece I did for my grandmother recently. She's turning yes. later this year, and I hope she really likes it, but I'm pretty sure she will like it because I, I'm sure I she'll really love it. much love in it. And the other favorite piece is uh, the piece from the Austrian influencer Trinks of Mich, Trinks of Mich, um, which I did it just, I, I, that was a project I really want to do for such a long time, but always didn't find the time or found other excuses to not do it. And uh, earlier this year, I finally found the courage to do it. And uh, she was really happy about it, I think. And that, uh, on the other hand, made me really happy because I really like it to, to touch people with my art. And when people are happy, I am happy. That's always so nice. I am confident and like I am like putting all of FTI on this one. I am very confident that when you deliver an art piece to someone or you show a concept, they're just as thrilled as I am. Like a million exclamation marks, 30 separate messages saying, yo, this is so <laughs> sick. What do you mean? I gave you an idea. This is the coolest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And I am so confident that people have very similar reactions to me because what you do for people, as we talked about a little bit ago, was you take someone's idea and you just you blow it up. You make it so damn awesome um, when it comes to creating dot work, because that's one I feel like people need to kind of not experience rather, but kind of like see what goes into it. There's so many dots. Like the platypus, <laughs> there are so many dots. Yeah. I can only imagine the hours you spend working on them. Um, this is a dumb question, and I apologize. Do you apply these dots one by one or have you learned kind of like a secret formula <laughs> to speed up the process? Oh man, I've been waiting for this question. I was so <laughs> sure this question was going to come out. <laughs> um, actually, with the, with the platypus and the capybara ones, I've copied some of the dots because I'm working with vector graphics and so I can copy as many mm -hmm. dots as I want technically. But it, if I if I copy too much, obviously I'm getting patterns in my dots, and that's what I really don't want because then what's the sense in making hand work dot work 
anyway. So then I could use any texture brush. There are so many good texture brushes out there. But most of the time, I actually draw every dot by hand. Dot for oh the... my god. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's the reaction everybody is coming up with. But most of the time, I say 90% of the time when I'm doing my dot work, it's kind of only relaxing and I can let go and feel like kind of meditating. I've never been meditating, but that's like what, what kind of state of mind you're into i think yeah. uh if you can follow me sorry it's a bit late and i'm a bit tired already but okay. yeah i think you get what i mean i hope no most definitely <laughs> uh, uh what uh what i've always 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 wanted to kind of break down with like any visual artist especially because like two people can be creating traditional art but they create such different art from things they're inspired by and what like what motivates them and your realm is endless like as we mentioned like pokemon's care bears collaboration penguins in tubs you even made the shit squad podcast logo and that thing was so rad and i remember seeing it for the first time and i was like that happened so fast what do you mean so no like it's actually really really cool and i could spend hours just like dissecting your brain about what goes into your art and such so like honestly man this is awesome Oh, thank you so much. That's so damn uplifting. It's so good to hear. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, oh, but yeah. to be honest, uh, with, with mentioning uh, the commissions I did for so many FTI projects and other FTI members, it's it's. I'm just able to uh, deliver this fast and this, obviously, this good if you all like it so much. Uh, because you have you you already have at least uh, very vague ideas of what you want and you really you really can uh, explain it pretty good so i can pick up on that and it's like i i just feel the connection on all these projects that i've already been in because if i wouldn't feel it i wouldn't do it because then it would turn out like crap probably if i wouldn't enjoy it so i think that's the main main thrive behind yeah. what i'm doing so I just yeah. enjoy the progress, uh, the, the, the projects I'm doing with you. Yes. Oh, yeah. And kind of going back with like through FTI back to kind of the beginning, what do you kind of, what do you remember or recall like the first time that you kind of um, interacted with FTI? Oh, very, very wogly, very wake, very wake. Uh, it was because of, I think Matt contacted me and asked me if I wanted to be highlighted in the newsletter or I contacted him and asked him to be highlighted in the news. I'm not sure, but one of those two it was, definitely. And well, I have to admit, I've never been in any of these Instagram art communities because I think there are pretty much art and support communities out there because I I, I wanted, always wanted to do more of my stuff and not be influenced and uh, uh, distracted by anybody else. I have I, I have to interact with because I'm with him in the same community or stuff like that. But with Matt, I it kind of clicked on the first time, and I really, I really had fun with you. I was talking to you all the time, and it just was so smooth all together. A nice experience to work with you, and so that's what I recall at least. No, you're <laughs> absolutely correct. Like uh, I, I specifically remember we were doing um. Good morning, FTI community. I think we were like still in like the first like 15 sessions, maybe even maybe like the first 10. And uh, I have a group chat with Artie and Grayson on here, and then Entity and I talk separately in our own conversation. And I was showing them your portfolio instead of like sending Instagram profiles. Like I was so like brought back by your art because like uh, mentioned on a few sessions ago, I like really weird art. I love expressive art. I love art that makes you think. And to kind of see like your portfolio or be introduced to it or rather, I was like, Artie, Grayson, check this out. This is getting in a newsletter right away. This is being the creator of the week right away. We got to get Timmy to create things for us. Then all these projects later, um, we've created so much. As you mentioned, like every idea that we've pitched to you or a collaborator has pitched to you, you always respond not only instantly, but with a grander idea for the pitched idea. Um, with every idea being like unique in terms of style and especially what the art's being used to represent, whether it's a podcast, 
whether it's like uh, Christmas, for example, when we're doing the FTI holidays, whether it's you just saying, hey, Matt, notice you need a newsletter panels. Here you go. Have fun with them. Um, <laughs> what has been your like favorite collaboration piece you've designed so far? You don't have to make it like an FTI piece, of course, but like as an overall like collaboration. Actually, I don't. Besides the FTI stuff, I don't, I don't really do much collaborations or anything like that. So it probably is, it actually is one of the FTI collaborations. It's just so hard to decide which one it was because I really enjoyed doing the Shitcast podcast uh, logo because, well, it's about shit. Who doesn't like shit? It's like, <laughs> like the, the, the grandfather of comedy. So I had to, be, to jump in on this one. But I, I really, I really also enjoyed doing the the three year FTI logo with all the names on it because it, it was a, a really great pro project from the start off because I just really enjoyed doing logos and doing this one in particular it was such an honor to be honest and yeah th this this has to be the greatest collaboration I've ever done it's the FTI three years anniversary logo because I also had to the chance to uh, integrate all of the community members into this art piece in particular. So that was something I really enjoyed. And everybody listening, I'm not sure if you have seen it, but Timmy has incorporated not only community members, but like the background gradient behind the emblem is legitimately like series we've done. Like the newsletter, Sizzling Summer, Emerson's Music Corner, the Persona Rumble. Like he has captured FTI's first three years perfectly. Um, one of my really good friends, James, when I go to work like every day and I'm wearing this sweater when it's not plus a million <laughs> degrees out, James would go like, oh, that's, a, that's the Matt Ryder outfit right there. He doesn't know how to take that sweater off. And I'm just like, yeah, well, you know, like I like the sweater, I like the sweater. And he's like, you kind of have to like wear your uniform on the floor. And I'm like, well, <laughs> technically, this is my uniform because I'm the person that <laughs> that's a part of FTI. Um, uh. When when we're looking at FTI from like uh, just from like an overall standpoint, the core mission is connecting creators with creators, and we love seeing that when FTI is doing what it's meant to do, it brings smiles to everybody's faces, and not only the people collaborating but the people that kind of get to enjoy the art as well, whether it's designing already in ballistic shit squad podcast to backing your art reels with Wednesday and flicks those music. Uh, you've quickly become an FTI community staple when it comes to discovering new artists, not only from the FTI community, of course, what kind of like draws your eyes to their art? Um, the, most of the time, actually it's the message behind it. Uh... I'm I'm really enjoying a lot of queer and feminist artists right at the moment, uh, especially in the tattoo area, because I think these messages are absolutely important and need to be spread and need to be heard and drawing my attention right now pretty much. Really cool. Like it being kind of something different. I mean, most people will kind of look at the art and be like, that's really cool. I like that art. But kind of going into like the deeper meaning behind it and like what it kind of stands for makes sense. Yeah. Of course, it also is a nice, nice bonus on top if it looks aesthetically pleasing at the same time. But I think so art nice. does not always need to be aesthetically or pleasing at all. Art can also be hurtful or uh, trigger other emotions as well. Fair enough. And then kind of talking about like going from like viewing other people's art to kind of working on your own for a collaboration. Is there something when you kind of get reached out by to like work on something in in like collaboration with someone is there a blueprint that you kind of start with every time you go into it um as in like when you're kind of doing something for fti as an example we can use that uh my, my blueprint i i don't have a blueprint my blueprint is uh i i i i i, I take a look at who am i working with who is the person what does mm -hmm. the person want from me i listen to the person and try to totally understand what is uh demanded uh what what i what i am asked to deliver and then i'm just trying to take that and put that into something that you can see and speaking of what everybody will be able to see this is an exclusive very 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 exclusive piece of information as we've been mentioning the in your studio podcast is wrapping up its first season with this session right here 
But you may be asking, Timmy, Will, Matt, what's next? What's going to join Good Morning and the FTI newsletter all summer? Well, we have teamed up with not only a bunch of community members, but we've also teamed up with Timmy Toucan to bring back the Sizzling Summer series. I am so excited for season two. Like when I tell you I am so excited, I was very excited to reach out to the members. I'm like, hey, Timmy, by the way, we kind of want to do this again. What's your calendar looking like? Within a day, he was like, hey, Matt, here you go. And well, trust me, when we reveal the logo, everybody will be just as excited, if not as more excited as I am <laughs> currently. I'm going to reveal the whole lineup soon on FTI, of course, of who's taking part. But the cell will be of Timmy's logo by itself. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's going to be one hell of a time. But wrapping everything up, I think we've only touched the surface when it comes to learning about you and the amazing path that you are carving as an artist so far. Uh, we've talked about it numerous times in this session alone. The happiness you have brought to people worldwide does not go unnoticed. Always being willing to help in any way possible is a seriously, seriously, seriously such a special trait. So I just want to thank you once more for everything you've done, not only for me, not only for Artie, but for the entire FTI community and the people you've designed canvases for, the people you've put your art on their skin for, absolutely everybody. You are one special human being. We are so thankful to have met you last year. But one of the hardest questions I want to end with here, what drives you every day to not only create, but be a person who is always willing to help others achieve their dreams? That's a damn tricky question. <laughs> Especially <laughs> considering it's 2 a.m. in the fucking morning and I'm tired of hell. But, um, well, to be honest, uh, what drives me, what gets me out of bed? Uh, cats. Two hungry <laughs> little Wait, brats of me too. cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cats. We asked Will's cats to be a part of the podcast, but they uh they didn't really want to be part of the podcast, no, so we'll just have to still feed them. Yeah, they respectfully do fine. <laughs> I uh asked very nicely and they said no. I guess I still feed them. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, I just asked mine, mm -hmm. and she's also pretty sleepy. I don't think we get a statement from them, but I <laughs> can pretty sure tell you that they are making noises in about three to four hours when I'm trying to sleep, so we'll see about yep. them. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I totally love them. All right. Well, on behalf of me, Matt, and the entire FTI community, I just wanted to thank you for being able to come onto the podcast today and for basically everything you do for the community in general. Um, basically, so much work I've seen done for us, and it is just so amazing. Just want a big, big thank you. Um, but when it comes to where everyone could find you um, and kind of get to know more of you, where would be the best place to look? Uh, the best place to look would be on Instagram. Uh, you can find me at timmy.tukens.art or uh, my homepage, which I don't really update regularly, which is www.timmy2ken.com. And well, I have to say thank you to the both of you, but especially to Matt for all the stuff he does and to create this awesome and wholesome community and bringing so much joy to all of us and connecting us it, it it's so nice to see this all getting bigger and bigger every day and it's really been nice to be on this podcast and thank you so much for having me it's been so much fun all together thank you for joining us at two in the morning for this um it goes without being said Will and I wouldn't have had the opportunity to talk to Wednesday, to talk to Bryceus, Nintendo Cisco, Artie and Grayson, Mega Matt, Joe Ash, who else? Emerson Corleone, Mindy, Entity, Nathan709, and you, if it wasn't for you, because you designed our logo and you have helped us so much persevere and continue to grow. Uh, FTI community, if you want to check out Timmy's fantastic and i mean absolutely fantastic portfolio you can visit him on instagram at timmy.toucans.art and 
if you want to hit up Timmy for a collaboration, you will not be disappointed. Your brain will be on the other side of the room when you open that link <laughs> because what he creates is phenomenal. Uh, FDI community from everybody here, thank you for joining us for every session of the first season of the In Your Studio podcast. I've been Kappa Matt. That's been Will. Timmy 2K closes it out with us. I hope everybody has a fantastic summer, and we'll see you for the Sizzling Summer Series. 